The other new features they've added into ADS 8 is Quick Sync Playback Support. I've got a timeline here, which is full of AVC HD footage, which is all H.264 files. And the way ADS works is it does all the work using the processor. So it plays everything back, does all the effects using the processor. It does use Intel QuickSync on export. So QuickSync is where you can take timeline full of stuff. And if you want to make it up into H.264, which is a very common format, it's used for MP4 files, Blu-ray files, that sort of thing. It uses QuickSync to do it really, really fast. Like an hour's worth of footage would take 10 to 20 minutes. It does the same thing with 4K. So if I'm in a 4K project, I'll get much faster encoding into 4K H.264. That only works on computers that have got QuickSync. Now, this computer doesn't. Let's switch to a computer that actually does have QuickSync on it. So I've now come onto another computer. It's a laptop. Have a look at the properties of it. And you can see I'm using a laptop processor. This 4710 is one of the lower end i7 laptop processors. So there are ones that are slightly faster. As you can see, it's running at 2.5 gigahertz. It's using Intel QuickSync, so it's using the Intel graphics card to do all of the work. So I'm going to pop into EDIUS. I've got the work group version here. This does work with the pro version as well. I'm going to start up a new project, which I'm going to call 4K, and I'm going to choose my UHD preset, which is this one here. So 25p, 3840 by 2160, which is the size of UHD, which is the size I most commonly use with my Panasonic GH4 camera. So I'm going to start that up. Bring in some footage. Throw a couple of bits onto the timeline. Start playing it back and you can see it's quite happily playing that back. It's playing it back nice and smoothly. Put it full screen. Now this is 4K UHD footage which is being played back on the computer screen. My computer screen isn't 4K. I have had people say, do I need to have a 4K computer screen to edit 4K? No, you don't. You can quite happily edit it on an HD screen. It's just you won't see it at its best quality. So anyway, I'm just going to quickly set up a couple of layers here, not particularly worried about the content. Now, doing 4K is hard. There's no doubt about that. It requires more processing power. Generally, we recommend that you go for a desktop processor, which will be a 6-core or an 8-core. Depending on the program, you can edit 4K on a regular Haswell desktop processor. But trying to do anything other than straight cuts on this kind of laptop processor that I've got in this machine, which is a year old laptop processor, you are asking for lots of rendering normally. This one's got quick sync. So let's see what happens there. I've got two layers. I've got a regular layer and a picture in picture layer. Keep your eye on the buffer, which is down here. When Eddie starts playing, it shows me how many frames are in the buffer. If it drops down to zero, it means it stops playing it. And let's just see if we can get through that what odd 30 seconds worth of picture in picture. And as you can see, not only is it playing it normally, it's actually climbing. The buffer is moving up, which means I'm handling it quite happily. I'm going to be able to do two layers of picture in picture effect like this to the cows come home. Let's shove on another layer, put another clip at the top. Now for this kind of effect, for doing three layers of picture in picture, I would normally say you've got to have at least a 2011 pin system because our normal regular desktop Haswells can't manage that. And this can't manage it either. So the QuickSync helps. The QuickSync gives you more than you'd get normally. You know, it doesn't turn it into a massive supercomputer because I am doing three layers of UHD pictures in a UHD project. That's hard work. On top of that, I've set the best quality scaling that EDIUS can do. EDIUS can do this thing called Lanxos scaling, which is generally recognized to be the best quality scaling. There's several settings for it. I tend to go for either sharper or smoother, just about the same amount of effort, but that is the best quality scaling you can get. And you know, I wouldn't expect a six or even an eight core processor really to cope with that kind of layer of effect. If you're just doing one layer or you're just doing straight cuts, you, know, you can pile on the effects. You can go and grab some uh, color correction. Let's put a three-way on there. Open it up, fiddle with something. Bung a YUV curve on there. So I can just put a kind of S curve on there. And you can see, yeah, quite happily coping with that. I can throw that on there. Let's slow it down. Let's add some speed. Bit of a slow motion effect. Yep, that's all running nicely. Again, Buffer can quite happily cope with that. EDIUS is very good at piling on the filters and it can cope with an awful lot of filters 
on one clip. Because when you start playing two at once, it's got to actually take two clips, it's got to decode them, it's then got to merge them with your scaling and put the picture and fixture on it, that it's going to start using the processor an awful lot. Now here's exactly the same sequence on the same laptop, but with the quick sync turned off. So I'm just going to press the play button and you can see immediately it starts to play and it simply can't cope with the picture in picture effect. So just two layers of picture in picture doesn't work. If I go to a section where it's just cuts, so nothing happening at all, it can cope with that. So a regular laptop processor can still cope with just cuts, it just can't cope with having two layers on screen at once. If I go to the section that's got a bit of colour correction on it, if you remember this one had uh, two-way colour correction and a YUV curve, again, you can cope with that. It's just this section here, where there's a picture-in-picture -picture effect, it can't cope with for toffee. You can see how badly it is there playing through the three layers. Of course, the other thing QuickSync does is speed up exporting. So if I was to take that, I'm looking at well, over a minute's worth of 4K there. At 4K, I'm going to export it. Choose H.264, AVC, which makes MPEG-4 files. Click on Export. You'll notice there I have a nice little hardware encode tick box, which means it's going to use the hardware to do it. And I'm going to just export this clip and let's put it on a variable bit rate. Let's put it around to about uh, 20 mega second. Click save. Now this is doing 4K footage which is being encoded into 4K. So again, trying to make this work as hard as possible. And you can see it's doing it in about the same amount of time. It's doing roughly in real time. So it's 1 minute 30 clips. It's going to take about 1 minute 30 to encode it. It assumes the estimate there is correct. At the start here, this is having to take all these clips and merge them together, so that's harder work. When it gets past that, it'll probably coast through the rest of it a lot quicker. So here we go, I'm getting a bit faster now. But that's the fastest encoding to H.264 that you're actually going to get on any computer. And it's all done through this Intel QuickSync, which is built into the processor. Anyway, there we are, nearly finished. You can see it took about, well, one minute, 20 seconds. Of course, no quick sync also means slower exporting. So I'm going to go print file, choose the same H.264 export, give it a name, but you'll notice there, no hardware tick box. Click on save, let it get on with it. How long is this going to take? Well, there you can see an immediate difference with quick sync. This took one minute and 20 seconds. So it took about real time with all those layers of effects and everything on. Without quick sync, you can see you're immediately up to seven minutes. And this is on something that's a minute and a half. So a minute and a half is taking seven minutes. That's four or five times the amount of time. So an hour would take five hours. Whereas with quick sync, an hour would take an hour. Again, this is making an H.264 MPEG-4 file at UHD size from UHD footage. Now that's not the only thing you should think about when you're trying to decide about what processor to get. The quick sync isn't absolutely everything. Uh, we had a customer who wanted to do 16 layers of multi-camera with XD cam footage. Now XD cam is MPEG-2, so this wouldn't have made any difference to that footage at all. XD cam will totally rely on just the processing power. And if you're trying to do 16 layers of multi-cam, that needs a lot of processing power. For that customer, a 2011 pin system was the best option. If you're in any doubt, give us a ring, we can talk you through what's the best options for you, whether a better processor is better for you, whether the quick sync is better for you, or so on. As far as other new features go, actually in this release of Edius there isn't a lot. Grass Valley have decided to change the way they're releasing the program. So normally what you'd get is they would announce a whole bunch of new features, like a hundred new features. You'd buy it, you'd have all those features. There'd be odd little updates as you go. They'd maybe add in a small feature here and there, and that would be it. However, having to get a whole bunch of new features ready for a specific launch is quite hard work. You have to get everything ready, then it has to be launched, then you have to spend another two years getting ready for the next one and not actually putting out any of the things you've actually written. At least that's what's supposed to happen. I mean, over the course of Edia 7, they've added quite a few very useful, reasonably large features to it. So much better AAF exporting if you want to go to a program like DaVinci Resolve. Things like rippling markers, things like the way that you can change the audio channel monitoring. So they've added quite a few features since the start of Edia 7, by the time they got to Edia 7.5. Also, new format support. They added an XAVCS support, for example. 
So they have got into the habit of actually just adding things into the program when it's ready. Now, other manufacturers, typically Adobe, have said, OK, what we're going to do is we'll just bring out features when they're ready. And what we'll do is we'll charge you monthly for that. What Grass Valley have decided to do is they don't want to go down the subscription route. They don't want to make you pay monthly. They're going to say, no, pay us a bunch of money. You buy the program and then we promise to add all these features over the course of the next two years. So we have got quite a list of new features that are promised to be added. We don't know exactly when they're going to be added. They haven't committed to that. As it stands, the program's got a new interface. It's got support for a Canon 4K format and it's got bigger icons and it's got quick sync playback support. But that's it but there will be a lot of new stuff added. So it's going to be things like a new grading mode. So much better color correction and improved color correction over what we've got. It's going to be better quality slow motion. Another one that I'm really looking forward to is OFX support. Now OFX is a type of plugin standard that a lot of people use. It's people like Resolve use it, Vegas uses it. It's a standard for making plugins. And if this comes into EDIUS, then that means they'll be able to use more plugins. And one of my favorite plugins happens to be Boris Continue and Complete, which I do use in other programs. It'd be really lovely to use that properly inside of EDIUS. And support for OFX plugins is coming, so we should be able to get support for Boris and other plugins. So that's a very, very useful one. They've also got support for more formats. So they're talking about adding playback support for H.265 video, which is a very new format that's just starting to come out. What they haven't said is exactly when. But it does mean if you're looking at EDS8, you know, this won't be it. You'll get more stuff in the long run.